Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am jumping in with an intro before the intro that you're about to see, which I recorded like two weeks ago. I don't even remember. I want to tell you that somewhere in the video that you're about to watch, I said that this was going to be one episode, one episode only. Well, it didn't turn out that way. My plan was to just keep recording this until I was done and like I said, I started maybe two weeks ago, and I just, on Saturday night, put up a different video. Um, you know, did the, I think it was the long quarters quilt, something quick and easy, because this is a little bit time-consuming, the quilt I'm working on now. And I thought, oh, I'll get it done for sure for next week, and, you know, and then I can have that video. But right now it's Friday, and I'm not even halfway done, and I need a video for Saturday. And instead of trying to knock out something else... I can't switch gears again, so I'm giving you part one of this, so you can see what I've done so far. And uh, I am enjoying this very much. I still can't believe I designed something like this. It's like, why, why did I do something that is seemingly quite complicated? You just have to pay attention on this one, and I think that the... Um, Payoff will be good if you can actually make this quilt. I think your kids will love this maze. I really do. And I do want to say, though, if you screw up and you don't catch it, and it happens that the path just doesn't work for you, that's all right. The kids will still like it. Make a little bridge. Let them get over one path to the other. Something. So don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. Uh, if you want to try it, I'd be thrilled if you did. I mean, I just think that it's unusual. I don't know. There's probably a lot of quilts out there like this, but I didn't see any. I didn't really look. I just designed it on an airplane, and now it's coming to life. All right, I'll let you watch part one now, and it will end in the second episode next weekend. Hi, everyone. It's me, Darlene. I am back with another quilt. I am mega excited about this one. It's a quilt that I designed on my iPad, during my most recent flight to Memphis, and it is, I'm calling it, an amazing quilt because it's an actual maze that I designed. I didn't like copy this from somebody, I just created a maze. It, it's a workable maze. You can go from point A to point B. There's a couple of ways maybe that you can do it. And it's actually going to fit on a twin size bed or pretty close to. Let me check the uh, finished measurements. Where are they? Uh, about 42 inches wide, 56 inches tall. I just thought some kids would love an amazing quilt like this. They can, you know, play on the floor with their cars or Barbie dolls, or they could even just sit on their beds and, you know, work the path that way. I have a starting point and a stopping point, and I didn't plan that, you know, maybe that could have been a little bit bigger, and it would have been cute to have like a motif or even something that said start, stop, whatever. If you are interested in this pattern after you watch this video, there's details down below as to how you can get your grubby hands on it. Also some written out uh, sizes that you need to cut your strips and all that stuff. So go look down below, check that out, and let's start. I wanted something youthful, but not like babyish. And with all the fabric that I had, I was so happy to find this. It's just the alphabet. Now I would have liked something a little bit darker, so there would be more of a contrast with the path, but this is gonna work just great. I will not have kits for this. I don't feel like cutting a million strips. You're going to need two and a half inch strips, so if you have a jelly roll for the path, I don't know. I'm assuming they might sell some jelly rolls all one color, I don't know. But if not, you'll have to just get yourself some fabric for the background and for the path. I'm using my unbleached muslin for the path. If you want unbleached muslin for the path, I do sell this in my eBay store. Link is down below. So this is the printout that shows how it looks with the border around it. However, we also have this. This is the same as this, except I've taken the borders off because I'm going to be doing this as strips, but the border will be done after the fact. 
It'll make sense as we get started. So I just cut that border off for the working pattern and I included letters for the rows. And if you get this pattern, you will also get instructions for every row and what you're supposed to do for every row. So at first I was thinking I'm going to just cut my two and a half inch strips and then row by row per these instructions I would need a four and a half inch piece of the path, a four and a half inch piece of the background and so on and so on. But there's a lot of those sizes that repeat. For instance, like two and a half inch pieces, like this little white square right here as we go across. So I'm going to count like how many I need of each size for the path and for the background. Then I can just cut those pieces and label them and then I'll be ready to sew. This will still come in a very handy because it will tell you like for row A, you need, well, you need your little start or stop and you need um, a path piece, then you need a background piece, a path piece, background path, and it tells you what size. So you can just pick from your little piles that you made and put these things together. So I'm going to start cutting. I will be right back. Take your piece of fabric and I'm just folding it like this. And as long as you have this part even to a line, you shouldn't get any of those little kinks. And I'm going to, where is everything? I'm so lost. I'm going to just even this out here. And then two and a half. <laughs> and then now it'll go on the number five. And you can put some tape or something on your, on your uh, mat so you know exactly where to put your ruler. All right, go over two and a half more, seven and a half, and then ten. And I'm just going to finish what I can out of this piece. Just short for that last one. Okay, that goes into my a crumb stash. Now, I'm not exactly sure how many strips we need total, but it looks pretty even. There's 30 rows total, so maybe 15 strips of each, uh, background and path to do that, but then we also need the border. So I will keep track, obviously, of what I'm cutting, and I will know by the end of the video how many strips you need of each. So then what I'm going to do is, for instance, let me just move these. I am going to sit down and count. I started, but I want to record while I still have light. But like for the path, that's my muslin. I have a whole bunch that are going to need to be two and a half inch subcuts. So what I would do in that case is I would take my strip. Let's see how this works. If I need to open it up, let's see here. Ooh, I can get a whole bunch of two and a half inch pieces this way. So it's folded and so there's four layers there. And without messing that up, I'm going to cut right here on my zero line. And then I'm going two and a half inches. So right there, I already have four little path squares cut. Surprising how many of these we need. But I'm not going to overdo it because I don't want to, you know, cut more than I need to. But let me finish at least this. And I will change the instructions to let you know exactly what you need there. I don't even need a two and a half inch path piece for the top row. I do need a two and a half inch piece for the starting point. Oh, it doesn't matter, starting or stopping. I mean, obviously it can be flipped. And then I'll need four and a half inches, four and a half inches, and then whatever that is, and four and a half inches, and then whatever that is. So let me at least cut what I need for that top row and we'll make that. I'm going to wait for that little starting point because I'd like to find a little motif or something that I can put there and at the end. And I just don't feel like doing that right now. So I'm going to just create this part of the row and I'll add that later. Let me keep cutting and then I'll show you. So I'm going to look at my row and it says I need a little start would be two and a half inches 
and then I need this four and a half inch piece. I'm just going to lay it out. Now, if I had all my fabric cut, I would have all those stacks and I would just pick from that. And I would just follow this and it would tell me how to lay out the row. And then I would need the background, four and a half, like that. And then I need this eight and a half piece of the path. Let me just move it down so you can see what I'm doing. And then I need this other four and a half inch piece of the background. And then I need this long guy, like that. So I am going to connect all of these. And I'm not taking you to the machine, but the best way to make them not crooked is like, when I connect this to this, it's not so much that you want to get this part straight, it's that you want to get the top straight. If you can get the top straight, then when you sew and open it, you're going to have a nice straight piece. So I'm going to um, put this row together minus the little starting point. I tried to look for little motifs and I just don't want to take the time to do that right now. I'm sure I have things. I'm just going to go with green for start, red for stop. That's what I'm going to do because I want to be able to connect two rows and I want to be able to, you know, put this. So all I need for this little start space is a two and a half inch square. So I'm not going to cut a strip. I'm just going to cut a two and a half inch square and I will cut out of the green also. Like I said, it doesn't matter which end is start or stop, but I'm going to do starting here. So I'm going to attach that. I'm so excited that I have the first row done. I do want to mention that since I'm using a light colored path, I'm pushing all my seams to the darker background and I'm just finger pressing. I'm not going to go press this strip every time I have a strip. Let me cut for my second row. And here's what I'm going to do. I've done row A. I'm actually going to just scribble that one out because I don't want to accidentally repeat it. And here too, my instructions, row A, done. I have my next row set up. Let me put it together. I thought I was going to be like half miserable doing this. I was like, why did I design something like this? But I'm enjoying this so much. All right, now I'm going to connect this row to this row like this. Now the paths, you know, might not make sense yet <laughs> because it's not done, but hopefully it will all work. If it doesn't, then we did something wrong because there is an actual maze here. When you print it out, you can do it and you'll get there. One thing, when you're putting your pieces together, it's always going to alternate background path, background path, background path. If you have two background pieces together or two path pieces together in one row, you did something wrong because I, I wouldn't make us piece the same color. Um, okay, I'm scared now. This is the scary part. I'm going to sew these two together. So I'm putting that like that and I'll be sewing on this line. So here's how my first connection went for me. Here is one place where, you know, there's matchy matchy and my intersections are off by, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch. I can deal with that. But then as I started to get to the end, one row was a little bit longer than the other and I was like, okay, that's a matter of stretching too much. When there's a lot of seams, you know, if we tug a little bit, it doesn't take much. So try not to stretch your rows as you sew. So I picked stitches, you know, almost halfway to try to just relax that fabric. And I came out okay, again, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch off. But I did. I took the time to pick the stitches out because it was off by like maybe a quarter of an inch. And it's not because things weren't cut right. It's because, you know, we tend to like, when we hold the fabric, I don't know, at least I do, I sometimes tend to, you know, maybe hold the top one a little bit more than the bottom one. You just want to lay it out and keep checking as you're sewing. Are you going to have matching ends? If you're not, then you can stop where you are and, you know, see where you went wrong. I am going to count 
all the different size pieces we need. And I am going to do all my cutting. I'll probably do that tonight. It's only Monday. This is going to be for Saturday. This is how much in advance I wanted to do this because I thought it would take forever. I don't think it's going to take forever. And I think it's going to be really fun. I think, I do think. I might be completely wrong, but we'll see. So, and I will probably put some more rows together and let you know, but I don't want to be bringing the whole thing to the machine each time. So I may, you know, connect two more rows and then maybe connect those. So maybe four rows. And then I might do another strip set of four. I just have to keep track, like, you know, rows A, B, C, D, A to D, you know, so I just know where they belong in this quilt. Okay, so uh, you'll see me again probably tomorrow. I'm back, it is tomorrow, and I didn't do any cutting last night, so I'm going to start cutting today. So far, I counted how many two and a half inch squares we need for the path, and also for the background, but I'm cutting for the path right now. We need 122 squares, two and a half inch squares, and here's how I'm doing it. I just want to show you. I have my two and a half inch strips, um, you know, it was cut while it was folded, and then I just folded it again. So it's four layers, and I'm just going to cut on the zero, and the two and a half, the five, the seven and a half, the ten. That's going to give me 64 squares all at once, because I have four strips here. Sixty-four squares, quick and easy. I'm concerned that I'm not going to have enough background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all my path. Then I'll know how many strips I used, and then I'll be able to, you know, figure out if I have enough background. If, if I don't have enough background, I'm just going to pick another fabric and I will just start over. It's just two rows that I've done so far. So I'll be good. Either way. Okay, I'm just going to get back to cutting now. I have all my pieces cut. I had fun doing that. I like cutting fabric. And I counted everything. Look at this nice little stack of the two and a half inch ones. And then for the background, I think I'm going to have enough for my border. I was so careful cutting the background. I mean, I tried to make the best use of each strip so I could get all the pieces. I'm pretty sure I have enough for the border. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think so. I just hope I don't screw anything up because I don't have any more of that fabric. So you're going to cut all your strips. I will have a total of how many strips you need in the instructions. I have that jotted down somewhere. I just don't remember right now. And then I just started cutting the pieces. I have it all figured out for you guys. Like we needed 122 cut at two and a half like I just showed you. That was quick and easy for the four and a half inches. You know, we needed only four of these in the muslin. So when I tell you how many strips, I'm going to add strips on. Then you don't have to worry so much about like how many of the pieces can I get out of this strip. You can just, you know, cut what you want. You can start with the bigger ones, get those out of the way, and then do the smaller ones. Do whatever you want. But, you know, you just want enough fabric for a project like this. You don't want to just run out halfway through and then say, gee, I cut all this for nothing. So you'll be fine. I promise. I have a lot of scribbles on my paper. All I have to do now is just look at my row and I can pick from my piles. I'm going to have them nicely stacked over there and uh, it's going to go quick and easy. I do believe it will. Let me do some and I'll be back. This is starting to look like a maze. I am so excited, but this is not a quick process. So like I said in the new intro that I recorded, I am going to be stopping now and I will finish this. I'm sure I can do it in one more episode. It's time consuming, but I enjoy the process. I just don't have a lot of time to work on it. So I will get it done. I have been creating like four rows at a time and attaching them. And these are the four I made last night and that still has to be attached. A couple of things, again, just be careful. You need to 
you know, I cross off the things that I've already done. My next one will be like row M. And what I do is I count how many of the path two and a half I need just for that row. I do have a total for you in all so you know what to cut. But then um, I just bring those and then I just try to get my pieces and then I line it up before I start sewing. I double check to make sure they're in order. You know, that's how I do it. Then I work on the next one. And when I make a strip of four, I put a pin in the top, uh, top left corner of that first row. And then when I make the next row, I sew it on right away so I don't get confused. And did I mention my intersections are off? I wouldn't mind so much if they went like this way, then this way, then back to this way, but this one like shifted in this direction, and then again a little bit in this direction. And I did spend some time on one connection, connecting two rows. I was so determined to get it right. Now if you have something as you're sewing that's really off, you can stop, take it out from the machine, and then like adjust one of your seams going in this direction and I kept doing that so I had a lot of starting and stopping a lot of thread and then when I was all done I discovered that the strips were sewn they were connected in the wrong place like the strip on the bottom needed to be on the top so I had to pick out that whole row with all those starting and stopping reinforcements I was like okay and then I happened to see the back and I had all loose backing thread. The bobbin thread was all loose because I had changed threads and I didn't change the, um, the tension. I had tried to use a thread that was like way too thick and I loosened it and I was like, no, 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 I can't use that. So I put my regular thread back in and now the tension was off and it was just all a mess on the back. So I had to re-stitch all of those. I didn't pick that out. I just went over it again. So now, um, today I am going to work on this a little bit more. But I just wanted to show you that it's starting to look like a maze. And don't get freaked out when you're putting this together because, you know, it can look wrong. Even my heart stops. And I'm like, this can't be right. How can this be right? Go by the instructions and also by this image. And you should be fine. It's just a matter of paying attention and checking every row as you go. So that's it. I will be back next week with the grand finale of this, and uh, I just hope that I don't screw up. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye!